exciting conference. Uh, today I will talk about um, uh, uh, ideal five cents. Uh, the structure of my talk is as follows. The main focus of my talk is the fractions. And uh, uh, first I will begin with a motivation about fractional chain solators, which is the analog of fractional corner high effect realized in detecting trim bands, but without a magnetic field. And uh, um, the important thing, there are a couple of motivations to study fractional chain solators, both from uh, mathematics, uh, physics, and also recently from the Morin materials and uh, um, recent experiments as well. Um, so the important thing for the fractional chain solator is about its instability. And this stability is close, closely related to the Gerber McDonald plasma algebra or double infinity algebra, which I will review. <coughs> so there is a, uh, so the Gerber McDonald plasma algebra is a very important algebra in the Landau level physics. And there is a common law, uh, a common wisdom that this algebra is disjoint uh, in the lattice system, in the flat band, due to the uh, very curvature in homogeneity. And I will review this common law and show the argumental reasoning for it. Then I will um, discuss a couple of concrete models that violate this common law. So this is a motivation for me to study the ideal flat bands. Then in the body of the talk, I will discuss uh, what is ideal flat bands. And, uh, and I will show that this, this is a large class of flat bands that exhibit universal properties and also exact jumping algebras. and also has important implications to real materials and experiments. Um, so, quantum half phase, fractional quantum half phase, is is uh, one of the most interesting intacting driven many body phase. And as far as I know, this is also the only experimentally realized topological order phase. Um, so this means that fractional quantum half phase is very stable. So in contrast, a uh, very uh, similar phase called spin liquid is also topologically ordered, but spin liquid is never experimentally realized in electronic systems. And uh, fractional quantum half phase exhibit fractalizations. It has uh, fractalized annual excitation and uh, Carl Lattinger liquid. And a fascinating and important potential application of quantum half physics is to make uh, topological quantum computation. And the proposal proposed by 10 years ago in the following is the following. So suppose you use two counter propagating uh, Lattinger liquids and with spin up and spin down you can gap out this gapless mode either by introducing the <coughs> U1 symmetry, particle number symmetry breaking that couples the system to superconductivity, or by introducing the backscattering between two edge modes. So in the domain wall of the uh, gapped region, gapped by two, these two different mechanisms, this domain wall is uh, proposed to be a paraphermium, that is a building block for uh, the quantum computations. However, this 10 years ago proposal have an uh, issue is, is that the superconductivity is typically not compatible with strong magnetic field, while quantum heart system requires strong magnetic field to stabilize. So this motivates us to ask whether it is possible to experimentally realize fractional chain solators, which is quantum heart phase without magnetic field. And it's possible uh, because as pointed out by Duncan Hardin 30 years ago that the key ingredients that give rise to the Hawking activity is not a magnetic field, but rather it's time reversal symmetry breaking. So in this famous Hawking Hanikon model, you can design this, this um, uh, magnetic flux um, pattern, such as a total magnetic flux average to zero, but this pattern clearly breaks the time reversal symmetry. So the resulting band structure will consist of chain number one and chain number minus one, two bands. So if your chemical potential cuts in the middle of the density of states, and the lower band will exhibit anomalous Hall effect. So it's natural to ask whether if we partially fill this topological band and turn on interactions, can we stabilize uh, quantum, fractional quantum half physics in a similar way to Landau level? And the high answer is highly non-trivial because this thing is not guaranteed. There are a lot of competing phases 
for example, uh, from a liquid state, charge order state, and there are all many complications that essentially comes from the dispersions and the intrinsic quantum geometries of the wave function. So, before going into the details of the stability of this uh, fractional translator problem, let me compare uh, in more detail the similarity and the difference between Landau level and the trim band. So, the first difference is that the Landau level is completely flat without dispersion, but the trim band can be dispersive. However, we can add single particle terms in the trim band to make this dispersion completely flat. However, even though we make the trim band comp uh, completely flat, there is still a uh, fundamental difference between Landau level and the lattice system. For example, the Landau level is a continuous system so in the thermodynamic limit. The system is continuous translational invariance. The magnetic translation group becomes a dense cover of the whole 2D plate. However, in the lattice system, even in a certain dynamic limit, you only have lattice translation symmetry. You don't, you don't allow to translate in between the lattice. Mm -hmm. And another difference is that Landau level intrinsically has tree number one. If you consider multiple Landau level, you can get high tree number. But in trim band system, even if you consider one band, it can sometimes exhibit high trim numbers. Another difference is from the uh, analytical point of view, the lowest null level is a holomorphic function, and there are many fruitful results built on top of this holomorphicity. However, there is no obvious um, um, reason that the trim band have any notion of holomorphicities. And and is guaranteed by all these nice properties, continuous translation, holomorphicity, and others. We can we know we know that the Landau level exhibit W infinity symmetries, and we can design a model Hamiltonians, for example, the one sort of natural Hamiltonians that are now less Laughlin state exactly. And this also the fact that the pseudo-potential Hamiltonian are now this Laughlin state and the pseudo-potential Hamiltonian is so close to the realistic cool induction suggests that um, Laughlin state is very stable in the null level. The lack of all these nice properties in trim band shows that there is no exact pseudo-potential construction, no exact um, W infinity algebra. So in other words, it also reflect that the fractional integer in flat band is much less stable. So if you have a pseudo potential and you can calculate the ground state exactly, can you also prove that there is a gap? Yeah, this is highly not true. Oh. Uh, I think some progress is made by uh, Amanda Young, and he, uh, she will talk about that tomorrow. That's with the truncated true. pseudo potential. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the uh, important ingredient of Landau level is the this non-commutative. Uh, algebras. So the electron content factorized into this, a classical center, which we call the Gagne center, and the radius, which we call the Landau orbital. At the quantum level, this, this two set of coordinates, they commute by the, themselves uh, as, as not community. And this non commutivity uh, is perhaps one of the most important algebra in Landau levels. And the Gagne center and the Landau level um, yeah, it can be used to construct later operators that correspond to the magnetic mm -hmm. translation within Landau level and also inter Landau level transitions. Mm -hmm. So, this non commutivity implies a lot of fruit fruitful results in quantum half physics. For example, uh, the projected density operator, which is the uh, exponential of the Gagne center operator, it enters directly into the interaction of electrons in Landau level. And this density algebra and this density operator is actually the generators of area preserving deformations. Mm -hmm. And it self satisfies the celebrated uh, German McDonald uh, uh, plasma algebra. And secondly, <coughs> this also directly implies that there exist uh, exact projectors. Uh, this is uh, uh, this, this operators constructed from the Gagne center projects to any two particles labeled by I and J into the relative angular momentum M channels. And the pseudo potential Hamiltonians, for example, here I showed is the four particle, grounds, uh, four particle spectrons uh, with V1 pseudo potential uh, diagonalized at one third filling. You, should, you can see that the, uh, the three fold exactly the ground state occurring at zero energy is a Laplace state. Uh, 
um, and they are separated um, by a, a finite size gap, at least C from the Marie Curie. So, however, this uh, exact jump algebra is not present in the flat band and in the lattice systems. And the, for concretely, we consider this setup. Uh, we start with a trim band, and even if we turn off a single particle dispersions, uh, we consider the same uh, density density interaction. The density operator is now the projected uh, density operator into this flat band. And if you put this interaction into computer and uh, dynamize, you see that this ground state manifold is not no longer precisely degenerate. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and this, this, this the, the, the energy gap between the ground state manifold and the excited state is also, um, is also depends on the details of the model. Yeah. So this splitting of the ground state degeneracies shows that, uh, the, the shows that there's an important consequence. Uh, so, for example, in many cases, even though you study uh, short range interactions, um, these uh, details of wave functions can drive a topological, can drive a phase transition from a left lane state to other phases, such as charge density wave. And the, the, the phase transition occurs when these, for example, the charge density wave um, uh, momentums uh, become lower <coughs> than, the ground state, uh, uh, than, than the left lane momentum sectors. Is this a uh, picture for for what, for quantum qualifiers? This is a flat band. Uh, this is a for term band. Some model. Some which model? This doesn't matter. It's some models. Yeah. As long as this, uh, yeah. there's uh, yeah. What I did is the be the I forget what the model is, but maybe that value graph but some term band model. Yeah. I just mm -hmm. use it for illustration. What do you call it? What is a term band? It's yeah. a, what is Chern band? It's a band which has Chern number? Hash number one. Oh, no. yeah. You call it Chern band? Yeah. That's big. Uh, it's good. Yeah. So the, the reason is the following. You can also define the projected coordinate into the topological band. Now the projected coordinate becomes a partial derivative of K. It also depends on the barrier connection of the, of the electron. Uh, so the shift of the barrier connection is essentially related to the polarization, the charge polarization, which is a gauge-dependent object. So now if you compute the uh, commutator of this uh, projected coordinate, and uh, the, the commutator is proportional to barrier curvature, this makes sense because barrier curvature is the um, momentum space magnetic field. And the barrier curvature can be is analogous to the one of one over L B square. However, if you go to the second order commutation, you see that the barrier curvature uh, derivative will enter into this commutator, and uh, and this is precisely because of this anchoring dependence of the barrier curvature derivative, the density algebra is not exact. So, but in fact, in studies, uh, I will show that there is a large class of flat band systems, which we term ideal flat band, that disprove this, uh, this common law. And this ideal flat band will allow exact intacting zero modes, intacting ground state, with arbitrary amount of barrier curvature fluctuations. And I will show uh, examples, and uh, I will discuss the reason why this ideal flat band uh, is. Um, doesn't fit into this common law. Sorry, just a matter of when you say omega fluctuation, you don't necessarily mean that omega is dynamic. You just mean there's some non-zero shape for this omega. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. K dependence. Yeah. Lambda level is continuous translation symmetry kills the K dependence. Yeah, okay. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So, um, because quantum geometry is an important ingredient, I will first reveal what's a quantum geometry. So study with a Brock wave function, you can define the barrier connections. And the barrier connection defines the covariant derivative, tells you how you parallel chain plot a wave function in the brain zone. And the inner product of two covariant derivatives defines the so-called quantum geometric tensor. And it's a, it's a, Hermitian, it's a Hermitian tensor. Um, so it has a real symmetric path and the imaginary anti-symmetric path. The real symmetric part is called the Fubini's Ludi metric, and the membrane anti symmetric part is the barrier curvature. So, the physical meaning of the barrier curvature, as we know, is the, is the one with dual um, 
transport in the brain zone is pick up a gauge invariant phase that is determined by the barrier curvature. Uh, the physical meaning of the Williams 2D metric is that it defines the intrinsic quantum distance uh, for the states. Uh, for example, um, it's re closely related to the wave function overlap. So you can expand the wave function overlap in terms of one minus uh, the metric times the, times the dKa, dKb. So if two wave functions are orthogonal, they have infinite distance, but the two wave, wave functions are identical, the, uh, the, the metric becomes zero. So the Fourier Studi metric defines an intrinsic distance uh, and gives the brain zone a Riemann structure. Sorry, what is the index A on the derivative? Oh, A is the A, B, and X, Y, where I consider 2D. So A, B is X, Y. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes. And K is? is K is the momentum. I see. Mm -hmm. So you can express this quantum geometric tensor in terms of the band projectors. And because of this project of uh, properties, you can, uh, the quantum geometric tensor has two real eigenvalues, and both of them are positive uh, semi definite. So now I will show a couple of concrete models that, uh, that is contradict with the common law. And the first example is the uh, twisted by electrophane systems. But I will emphasize that this contradiction is actually general. It goes beyond the twisted by electrophane uh, models. So uh, in general, there is a criteria for the correlated system. It actually means that the ratio of kinetic energy or the bandwidth over interactions. So if the T over U, the, intact, uh, the kinetic energy over bandwidth is small, uh, it's in the strongly correlated regime. And recently, a couple of years ago, the twisted valley graphene, uh, in general, the twisted materials realized a new route to control the electrons' correlations. So if you uh, stack 2D2 materials together and uh, apply a small twist, you'll see that there are large super more uh, uh, patterns occurring. So it turns out that the electrons' dynamics on this uh, emergent more unit cell is fundamentally different from the original <coughs> dynamics on the, uh, on, the small, uh, on the original lattice. And uh, in many cases, by uh, adjusting the twisting angles, you can tune the uh, uh, kinetic energy or the bandwidth of electron mm -hmm. and uh, drive the system to strongly correlated region. Mm -hmm. So now let's take a graphene as a concrete example. I have two layers of graphene twisted, uh, as we heard from yesterday. Um, these, these graphene have uh, two valleys, valley and one and valley two. These two valleys mm -hmm. form a small brain zone corresponding to the enlarged real space cells. And these two valleys are separated uh, in, uh, by a large, much larger distance compared to their brain zone size. So the two valleys are basically independent, they are weakly coupled. So in this sense, we can, we can think of the physics within the uh, valleys individually. And the band structure of the twist biographic system looks like this. Uh, so the black, black, uh, black lines correspond to the band structure of valley one, and the red band structure corresponds to the band structure of valley two. So uh, in, for the untwisted graphene, the, the electron energy scale is typically in the order of electron voltage, either EV or 1000 MeV. But by twisting, you'll see that the, the uh, active bands on, is only within um, 20 or uh, 10 MeV. So in other words, the electron's kinetics is strongly suppressed, but interaction is still not modified much. So this drives the system into strongly correlated region. So the, um, uh, one of the famous models describing the twist paragraph is considered uh, the uh, continuum model, and this model describes the single valley physics. Another valley is related by time reversal uh, added to this single valley. So this model consists of uh, um, two um, direct cones sitting on the bottom and the top layer, and they are, tunnel, they are coupled together. So there is a very interesting limit of this model that we heard yesterday, that if we turn off the diagonal tunneling matrix element, this model allows uh, uh, exact flat bands. 
uh, at the so-called Kyle magic limit. So here I plotted uh, the band structure of this model at the magic angle. You'll see that there is an analytically provable exact flat band. One has hash number one and one another has hash number minus one. And the band has a pretty non-uniform um, barrier curvature. So what is surprising for me at the beginning is that if I consider a uh, one-third field, this blue trim band, and uh, put it into short-ranged interactions, the numerical results shows that there are exact three-fold degenerate laughing state in a similar way as Landau levels. So this, this numerics uh, calculations is valid for any system size and is exact. Uh, so this, because this exact ground state coincidence with the non-uniform barrier culture, it's violates this common sense. And the important ingredient that leads this metric, as we'll discuss later, is the satisfy, satisfy, um, is a, this, this trace condition that this model is satisfied, which I will discuss uh, uh, later. Um, just a question. Yeah. This plot that you just showed, how robust is it to your choice of interaction? Like, how important is it that you actually make uh, the right yeah, choice of interaction for this to actually yeah, yeah. happen? I will come, come back to this okay. later. Yeah. So, there are many other generalizations. For example, we can consider uh, multi layer graphing, uh, n layer graphing, a Bernal stacked. Uh, um, for the top layer and n layer graphing stacked on the bottom layer and apply a twist. And similarly, this model interestingly exhibit, uh, still exhibits exact flat band, but now each band has a high chain number. And chain number is precisely determined by the number of layers you have. So now if you go to one band and casually fill this band and turn on short range interaction, from the uh, spectrum, you see still uh, exact um, degeneracies. And if you compute the entanglement of this ground state, it has infinity uh, gaps. So to summarize, this, this ground state occurs at filling 1 over 2c plus 1, uh, which is precisely filling fractures for the Hapring state. So it's no longer a Laughlin state, but Hapring state. Uh, and, uh, and all um, uh, entanglement properties, ground state properties are all consistent, consistent with the model half-brain state in this high chain number uh, states. Uh, so actually, as I, just, as I point out, this uh, feature is not a special feature of twisted graphy models, but in fact is a general. There are many other models uh, that is beyond uh, uh, Dirac based models, uh, graphene based models exhibit a similar phenomenon. For example, the capital Muller model, which I, I will skip the details of the model, but because the model is not the key point of this talk, uh, uh, but uh, the message is that this is a, a variant of the Taylor model with some fine tuned hoppings. And this model also exhibits exact flat bands and also non uniform barrier curvature and exact lovely states as well. Another um, model is a, a Dirac fermion in periodic magnetic field. And uh, if a couple Dirac fermion to uh, uniform magnetic field, you'll see zero modes uh, and the square root B dispersed uh, uh, lambda level gaps. But if you consider Dirac fermions in periodic magnetic fields, uh, the zero mode is still um, preserved uh, because of the index theorem, but the finite energy band, um, uh, band becomes uh, dispersed because of the, of the uh, continuous translation symmetry. And if you put interactions into this uh, fan band, you still see the exact Laughlin states. So there are many common features of all the models that balance the common laws that I have discussed. And the first feature is that they exhibit uh, exact zero uh, single particle dispersions, and secondly, they all exhibit positive definite barrier curvature, and certainly they satisfy the trace relation. In other words, for every momentum point, if you consider, if you compute the trace of the uh, metric, it's always equal to the barrier curvature. And it also was to point out that when you define the trace, you need a metric to a trace. So the trace is a construction of a unimodular metric with a Fubini's duty metric. So they constitute 
the definition of ideal fat band. There are a couple of mysteries that I will, uh, I will talk about. The first is that it seems that this, this trace condition implies a couple, uh, indeed some universal physics. It covers the twisted particle affine system, covers capital model models, it implies some universal properties. The secondly, the existence of exact Laughlin state suggests that there are some emergent closed density algebras, even though barrel curvature is not uniform. And thirdly, in the high number case, there clearly there is a correspondence, constant, a correspondence between high trim band and multiple number levels. So there are uh, the three features that I will try to explain in the remaining of my uh, talks. Uh, so any comments or uh, questions? Yeah, actually, can you, I mean, I know you're going to specify your interaction, but you obtain some entanglement spectra with an infinite entanglement gap, so I assume that's with a pseudo-potential. Uh, can you say again? Uh, you, in, in the previous slides, when you had the entanglement spectra? What feature? Um, yeah, this one. Yeah. So you have an infinite entanglement spectrum. That means you, you used apparent yeah. Hamiltonian, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, just a B1 uh, interaction, yeah. Well, more than B1, right? Because you have mu equals one-fifth and one-seventh, so I assume maybe... Yeah, it's a model, uh, short, list, uh, short range model interaction, yeah. Gee, a small question about the stress conditions. So yeah. it, it works here if for twisted bolygraphene and other things. And it first appeared in this 2014 paper by Roy. Right, right, right. Uh, is there a proof that ideal churn band should satisfy? I mean, it looks that they are satisfying, but is there the exact mathematical proof that? You mean satisfy the Jambi algebra? The the, the the trace condition. Yeah, this trace condition I, I, is is a, um, is a one. It's a definition of ideal band. We define that you by satisfy this condition, the three conditions. Yes, yes. So my question is, this idea of flat band is perfectly flat and topological. Right. And it satisfies the stress condition. Right. But is it, I mean, it's a necessary, con it's, uh, I mean, is it a necessary condition or? Oh, it's just a definition. Yeah. Yeah. At this level, it's just a definition. Yeah. Okay. I'll later talk about the yeah. Yeah. Right. So now, uh, We'll go through some details of quantum geometries, and we know that the quantum geometric tensor is, is a real part, is a, a formula to the metric, and the, the imaginary part is a barrier curvature. And we know that this tensor is positive definite. Semi definite means that it's two real eigenvalues, uh, uh, no longer, uh, never, um, uh, never negative. And we can also denote the eigenvectors as omega prime and uh, omega, and in general, these eigenvalues and eigenvectors are all k-dependent. So there is a, in this positive semi-definite properties of the geometric tensor implies uh, equality between the metric and the curvature itself. Uh, basically, it means that the trace of the metric is, is lower bounded by determinant, and it's lower bounded by the absolute value of the, of the curvature. And, uh, and, so now let's discuss what's the finical meaning when this bound saturates. Right. So first let's see the, the weaker bound saturates, the determinate bound saturates. So here is a, um, like a heuristic intuition or argument. So we can roughly view the uh, barrier curvature as the momentum space magnetic field, while the metric as the uh, momentum space uh, area form. So now if we see that the magnetic field and the area, we can, we can ask what is the magnetic flux density? The magnetic flux density is precisely the, the, barrier curve, the magnetic field divided by the area. So the situation of the determinant bound uh, implies that locally the flux density is always one. However, the orientation of this uh, droplet in the momentum space is still uh, k-dependent because the, because the metric uh, can be still k-dependent. And uh, from this eigenvalue point of view, this uh, determinant bound situation means that uh, the lambda, the lower eigenvalue, hits zero, but it's eigenvector, eigenvector that defines the, the also is eigenvector uh, that's closely related to the shape of this droplet actually has a k-dependence. 
A stronger condition um, is the saturation of the trace relation. The trace relation saturation means that not only now in the case space locally we have a unit magnetic flux, but actually the shape of the, of the droplet are identical. However, the magnetic field allows a local scaling, but preserves the local flux density. And the shape of this, and in this case, the null vector of the fullness study tensor becomes K independent. And this uh, null vector defines the uh, unimodular metric that is also parameterized the shape of the job plane. So, in fact, this, this, uh, there is a very nice relation pointed out by uh, Bruno and, uh, and others, is saying that the saturation of the trace bound actually implies the momentum space holomorphicity. So more precisely, the statement is that the, if the trace bound is saturated, the, it's a direct consequence is that the self-periodic part of the Brock wave function is becomes a, a momentum space holomorphic function up to a normalization factor uh, nk. And this normalization factor is precisely related to the local scaling of the Barry curvature. So now there are a couple of uh, important consequences follows from this momentum space holomorphicity. So one is that you can use the result of classification of holomorphic line bundles to determine the sorry, to determine the most general form of these uh, uh, ideal band wave functions. For example, here I presented is the most general form of chain number equals to one ideal band, band wave functions. It's, it's uh, written by the, as the product of normalization NK and a K-independent uh, factor and the lowest and level wave functions. Uh, so in the symmetric gauge, I can, choose the, I can write the lowest and level wave functions by using the uh, Wastras sigma function, which is quasi-periodic on the lattice translations. And it's, it's, it can easily check that <coughs> the self-periodic part of the wave function um, by multiplying the block factors, we can see it's indeed <coughs> a chromatic function of k. Uh, and it's also a normalization part times a holomorphic function of k. And based on this single particle wave functions, uh, it's, you can directly write down the many body uh, ruffling type uh, uh, wave functions. And this is uh, uh, the numerically observed exact many body zero modes uh, corresponds to this uh, wave function that is more, uh, generalized Laughlin wave functions. Uh, here is a Laughlin just two piece and the center mass piece and multiplied by this uh, single particle factors. And the important point in that is that the clustering properties of Laughlin wave function and this fractional fractional states are the same. Uh, thereby, they are both the exact roughly absolute function. And there's a couple of important uh, uh, factors to highlight for these uh, k-dependent factors. And it's a quasi-periodic factors. And uh, on the real space translation, it picks up an uh, opposite phase factor that cancels the lowest level phase factor. So that the whole wave function is a block wave function. It doesn't have a magnetic uh, phase, magnetic translation phase. Essentially, this B factor is not continuously translation invariant. It's only lattice translational invariant. So this uh, breaks the translation symmetry of Landau levels from continuous to lattice. And it precisely uh, determines the barrier curvature uh, fluctuations. And also, the same similar stories can work through for uh, high trend bands. As I discussed, the twisted bilayer uh, multi-layer graphene has a high trend numbers. And here, what I plotted is the uh, wave function of twisted multi-layer graphene uh, at, um, and the, uh, at fixed R, but plotted as a wave function in the k-space. So you will see that at any fixed R, the wave function exhibits uh, exactly uh, an, a couple of zeros, and the number of zeros is, is precisely the same as a trend number C. And now, if you treat the real space coordinate as a parameter, and advance continuously this real space coordinate parameter by at one cycle um, to the other lattice site, you will see that this, the pattern of zeros will smoothly evolve and under a cycle the zeros get exchanged. 
And this is uh, it's all the consequence of the case-based holomorphity that, um, that relates the topology of the chain number to the number of the zeros uh, of the wave function it exhibit. Uh, and uh, this uh, real space pumping process can be thought of as a dual solid pump because now the instead of what's happening in Landau level where the K is a boundary condition here, the real space coordinate is uh, an analog of the boundary conditions. And this rich uh, uh, zero structures implies that there are some um, uh, interesting structures of the wave functions which are discussed in the next slide. Um, so, uh, so we can determine uh, the uh, universal form of this uh, 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 ideal band of any, any chain number. And the basic idea is that uh, we can at any fixed R, because the wave function is holomorphic in momentums, the, it can be classified in, uh, by the, uh, following the classification of holomorphic line boundaries. So the wave function is essentially written as a holomorphic function uh, of the theta functions. And uh, in other words, the wave function is, uh, is a, a piece of Landau levels. So now, would, mm, So these wave functions are what? Are they eigenfunctions of a Hamiltonian or? Right, right. And what was the Hamiltonian? I somehow didn't yeah, last time. Yeah, good point. So the wave function actually, uh, it has uh, some universal form. And this doesn't rely on any Hamiltonians. So now if you start with some concrete models and you derive the wave function, you'll see that all the wave function fits into this universal form. Mm -hmm. So the wave function form is purely determined by the quantum geometries. So there are Hamiltonians that gives the wave function as long as the trace of metric equals barrier curvature, it must fit into this form. <coughs> so it's Hamiltonian independent result. So for number one case. Mm. Sorry, sorry, but but still you need to show that there are interesting Hamiltonians which would lead to such quantum geometries, right? Right, right. As I as discussed earlier, the twisted uh, Lego affin system is a concrete example, but there are a lot of concrete examples. Mm -hmm. And all of them satisfy this trace condition and they have a similar properties. So it's pretty some universal properties. Okay. But only one band satisfies there. Of course, higher bands they don't satisfy it. It's only the band at the zero energy. So now let's think of the two number one case. In the two number one case, on the lattice side, we have our uh, unit cells, and uh, it's it's um, it corresponds to uh, lowest down our levels, uh, also within the uh, the magnetic magnetic flux uh, unit cell. Uh, is precisely identical to the uh, to the lattice model unit cells, and this is also see from the uh, wave function that it's just a single piece of Landau level. But now, if you go to the uh, high chain number, the um, the mapping between Landau levels and uh, the lattice models becomes more interesting because you need, uh, for example, chain number two, you need two uh, unit cells to map into one magnetic uh, unit cell. Uh, but now there are two equivalent ways to uh, write down uh, low and low level wave functions. And uh, uh, as I, as I pictured, um, pictured here, the green one and the blue one. Uh, sorry, the green one and the red one. And now the physical rock wave function is trans translational invariant in the real space. It means that, um, it means that the rock wave function must be a linear superposition of these two equivalent uh, lowest than our level states. Uh, that's why it's called the current entangled uh, wave function. How many minutes do I have? Uh, uh, you could have uh, uh, five minutes. Okay. And then, uh, okay. maybe 50 minutes. Yeah. So now, uh, now I will discuss the um, emergent uh, GMP algebra. And uh, uh, so, since the wave function is a normalization factor times a holomorphic, uh, holomorphic functions, uh, it has, it's, uh, we can compute the um, barrier connections. We can decompose the barrier connection into the holomorphic connection and anti-holomorphic connections. 
So for example, here, anti-holomorphic natural is defined by taking the um, UK and the partial KU. And because of wave function, this path is holomorphic. This partial K operator will not act on this, but only acts on the normalization factors. So thereby, the anti-holomorphic barrier connection is purely determined by the normalization. So this has a very interesting consequence that if you compute the, uh, the barrier curvature is determined by the Laplace of the log of the normalization. And in other words, the normalization factor is a kilo potential that gives rise to the k-dependence of the barrier curvature. So now, how do we resolve this uh, GMP algebra? And the basic idea is that uh, we can factorize the barrier curvature into the constant path plus a fluctuation path. And accordingly, we can factorize the normalization factor into the exponential path and the remaining path. <coughs> the exponential path, if you take plug into this formula, take a logarithm and the and, uh, uh, Lapla Laplacian, you get the constant barrier curvature and the remaining. So this suggests that if we if we uh, look at the normalized, original normalized Brock wave functions, it certainly has a non-uniform barrier curvature. But and uh, importantly, we can adjust the normalization of the Brock wave function um, such, that, such that we kill, we throw out this normalization. And for this uh, unnormalized wave function, it effectively perceives a constant barrier curvature. And this is a basic idea that why the uh, uh, GMP algebra always risked out, even barrier curvature is not uniform. And more precisely, we can define uh, dual guiding centers and the dual under orbitals. And uh, there, um, the projected coordinate into this unharmonized uh, wave functions and the remaining piece of the coordinate. And they're a commutative, they satisfy uh, these canonical relations. And importantly, because they are projected into these unnormalized wave functions, their, uh, the commutator depends on the constant part of the barrier curvature, and there's no barrier curvature of fluctuations. So this set of this um, uh, lambda orbital and guiding center algebra is pretty analogous to the original starting point of the lambda level physics. But now, it the, the shows up uh, in a hidden way for the flat band that satisfies the Swiss condition. Sorry, I get a little bit confused, right? Of course, once you know the structure of your wave functions and you have this uh, fact, uh, right, that you can, uh, uh, and you, you basically rescale your wave functions. But how is it then, uh, kind of, there would be two consequences, I guess, with the scalar product in your Hilbert space right. should change. And also, probably, you said before, the operators, right? We take any operator, but now those operators, they would also get uh, whatever con conjugated by that, that thing. Right, there are, there are many changes, but my comment is that mm -hmm. if we only <coughs> consider the impacting zero modes, the normalization factor will not affect the real modes. The eigenproblems for the uh, unnormalized states is described by a uh, uh, generalized eigenproblem. So it's h psi equals lambda s psi. s is the wave function over lambda. But as long as the, we are considering the zero modes, lambda equals zero, whether it's a standard diagonal s or uh, normalized as standard matter. So tuning the normalization will affect many things, but not affect the existence <coughs> of impacting driven zero modes that are observed numerically. Does that answer your Maybe, uh, who knows? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, in a different language. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So, um, so this concrete algebra shows that the unnormalized ideal band wave function is precisely annihilated um, by this dual lambda level of operators. It's precisely the uh, momentum space analog of the lowest known conditions. And, uh, and these guiding centers um, follows the uh, translation uh, algebra, and we translate the wave functions within the flat band. Um, okay, um. Uh, this, sorry, uh, I ask. Is that exact procedure, or is this some... It's exact. Exact. Yeah, yeah. So this C is actual constant, or...? or? C, is a, C is a chern number. Yeah. A chern number, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. exact, everything is exact.
Yeah, so now I will um, maybe speak the, uh, quickly go through the implications. Um, so now we have a, a more complete understanding of the phase diagram of the trim band. We can divide our discussions into the ideal band case and also the case that deviates from the ideal band. So now the statement is that for any short range interaction from numerics and the analytical proofs, we can show that the FCIs are exact ground states. But when we increase the interaction range, we are, well, it's possible to have a tra phase transition from the fractional chain solitary to just that same way. And this point corresponds to the lowest on our level, where barrier curvature factor is uniform. And also, uh, this point, still for short range interaction, we have exact lap main state at zero modes. But here, if we increase the interaction range, it's possible to drive a phase transition from lap main state to charge density wave. Well, what are all these wonderful pictures? Well, there's a. Um, Exact dynamization spectrum, many body intact oh, This is numerical results or what? Numerical results, but also analytically provable, as I discussed. Right, so the important feature is that along this line, for short range interaction, no matter how non uniform the barrier culture is, the one state always has zero energy for short range interaction, and they are lap, generalized lap length states. So now if you turn on long range interaction, it's possible to have a phase transition to just the center wave on other phase. And what's the new phase? What are the properties of the new phase? The new phase is the, um, for example, I showed here is the root three, root three, just the density wave. The electrons, rather than favoring the fractionalizing into, into liquid, but favors standing at root three, root three pattern in real space to save energy, like Wigner crystal. Can you derive this from a Hamiltonian that there is this yes. large density? Yes, I have no time to derive, but yes. Yeah. Um, and if there is a si simple argument, I can show why the charge density is favored. Uh, I can show it uh, 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 so I will skip the experiment discussions. Uh, so yeah, so summary is, is that um, we have shown a large family of fair band systems with non-uniform barrier curvature but exhibit uh, emergent GMP algebra. And I showed that the ideal bands are a nice uh, platform to study quantum high effect on curve manifold, but now in the momentum space, not in the real space. And uh, the quantum geometries are used for uh, uh, important indicators for the, real, uh, for the search of fractional interiors for real experiments. Yeah. Thank you. To, to better understand, uh, so you suppose we start you now from the Landau level, yeah. right? And there we have this algebra of uh, symmetries. And now uh, let's let me write you derived it from some model, but I, I just invent some factor delta and k, and then I conjugate my algebra with that factor, right. and then I get a new algebra which is isomorphic. Is mm -hmm. it like? Uh, a summary of part of what is written here. Is it that algebra that you, you would have in mind? Is it right? Or is it yeah, wrong? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, I didn't understand. Is it for a, it's for a lowest Landau level, right? It's not for all Landau levels. Yes, the mapping is mapping but the. I, wonder, I mean, what, what is the sort of physical reason to distinguish the. I mean, I understand that, okay, in twisted bilagraphy and for the lowest Landau level, they satisfy this algebra just because they, they, they satisfy both 2dz bar minus a potential plus k, and that's why it's holomorphic in k and all that. But the higher Landau levels don't. But what's the reason to physically distinguish these cases? Uh, no matter high Landau level or lowest Landau level, the key ingredients, the common thing is the guiding center, or the density algebra champion. So what I show here is that there's an emergent uh, guiding center algebra. So this is a common thing. This applies to both lowest and high Landau level. Maybe there's some, I don't know, maybe the, there's more to be discovered. There's a larger class where sort of, I 
don't know, when you say oh, you, you have something for the quantum Hall effect, then yeah. maybe that's... Yeah, that's a good question. There's a good question. How do you make uh, the yeah. band that is analogous to the first level, for example, is a very good question. Yeah. But here, what I show you that is there the common, the important structure, the guiding centers that exist in low level, level, high level levels, is also exist in a hidden way, in a hidden and exact way in the five band systems. Please repeat what is the key point to get this, uh, the, uh, this uh, algebra? Yes, the key point is that if you, if you uh, work with, the key point is to, through, through, uh, to tune the normalization of the wave function. The key point is that for the unnormalized single particle state, it's, it's this, this uh, projected coordinate satisfy this guiding center algebra. You need to tune the normalization because there is an intrinsic relation between normalization of wave functions to barrier curvature and adjust the normalization to flat barrier curvature. So after doing this procedure, barrier curvature is constant and the algebra becomes closed. So this is why I say it's hidden exact algebra. It's not, so you need to do something to see that. But the scalar product will be, will be then different than in the Landau levels. It's a, is a isomorphism, but not a unitary transformation, right? Because the, the normalization will yeah. enter in the scalar product. Yeah. yeah. So normalization of isomorphism, but not really yes. an equivalence. So, well, I, I, yes, I agree. And I think that uh, maybe this picture is useful. And it corresponds to Lando levels, but with a local scaling. So Lando levels on the Kira manifold. Uh, yeah, can you comment on interactions? So, so, so far, like with flat bands, so we found this flat band, we, we know the algebra. So now you turn on interactions and you talk about fractional Hall effect on this? Yes, and all about all this uh, discussions is about interactions. For example, the phase diagram here, the, the analytical results and the numerical results are all interaction. Anybody eigenstates. So what do you mean by analytical result? You do not derive Poisson function, you just write it and then. And then I can derive the uh, generalized Laughlin wave function, and I can also derive the pseudo potential, generalized pseudo potential. And the way to think of the intensity power is this. Um, this ideal fact is that the electrons. And we'll not only see translational invariant interaction, but the interaction also depends on center mass. And this center mass dependence is precisely the barrier curvature effect. So only when barrier curvature is not uniform, the electron will see a center mass dependence of interaction. But this interaction doesn't uh, affect the, the, the zero modes. But we can talk later. Yeah. Yeah. So since this, uh, since you have this center of mass dependence, do I understand correctly that the exact degeneracy only applies to the zero modes, but not to the excited states? Exactly, exactly. So the in level level, the magnetic translation is the symmetry of the Hamiltonian. So as a consequence, all the exactly. states also translation, magnetic translation in VR. But here it only applies for zero, because you can only tune normalization for zero modes to get that. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a fundamental problem. Is this just algebra that, you know, the guiding center variables form a Heisenberg algebra? Yes. Or is the whole more, I mean, all the complex analysis, is that important? Or could I think about all these things just purely algebraically? Uh, you can fully so the understand these things fully algebraically. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you, you see, I never know whether it's important with these very elaborate formulae for wave functions. So let me summarize. Uh, like one, one point is that if you really want to map this flat band to Landau level physics, the, it maps to uh, new Landau level physics. It maps to uh, intacting particles that not only see the interaction not only de depends on their relative distance, but also depends on, on the center of two particles. This is a, a new, completely new uh, intact on the level physics. Now this is a mapping. Uh, 
to the, to the fair bands physics here. But I, I think it's not straightforward to explain here, but I'm happy to discuss later. Okay, so uh, thank you very much. Uh,